Welcome to episode 12. <gasps> Three months of podcasting. Woohoo! The Mama Bear Defense podcast, technically called The Gun Show. <laughs> and it is brought to you by Gray Man Solutions. He's a Kydex company and they come up with different Kydex holsters <laughs> for your for your concealed carry needs. He even made a Sharpie holster. So I mean whatever you need. If you, if you want that Sharpie on standby, those teachers, he's got you covered. You can type in Mama Bear, M-A-M-A-B-E-A-R at checkout and get a discount. So heck yeah. Thank you, Thomas, for your support. Also, I always forget to say this, but I'm starting it this time. Subscribe, like, comment, rate this podcast, please. It helps get views and, you know, gives us warm fuzzies. So please and thank you. Today, we have our special guest with us, Jessica. Woohoo! Welcome, welcome. Hello. <laughs> we will go a little bit more into interviewing you and your background, but Jessica is... Hmm, how do I describe her? She's an influencer. She's a woman of many talents and passionate about her diverse talents. So excited to dive in with that. We also have Mama Bear trainer Shauna with us as well this time. So you won't be listening to me the whole time. Moral <laughs> of that story. You're welcome. <laughs> I recruited people this week. Guys, we can do this. Gun news. What do you guys know about the Miller versus Becerra? Do you know much about that? I am i don't know much about it, but I've been waiting to find out what the actual outcome is of the court date. I mean, what actually happened? I don't know. Okay. I've been busy. Unfortunately, life took over again. Well, let me have you court out. Date, so that's good. There's a court yes. date a lot sooner than we thought it was going to be. Yes. So... The California or the Attorney General was trying to do a, a preliminary injunction. Basically, that's how to have more stipulations and make the court case a little bit more difficult. And generally, it pushes it back because you have to add all of these, oh, but this doesn't work and this technically doesn't, you know, makes it messy. But Judge Benitez said, no. He shot that down and he gave a date. And the date is, are you ready? January 21st, 2021. Oh, That's actually a lot sooner than we anticipated. So, um, and that's going to be in California? Yes, yes. But oh. Judge Benitez, no, he's a good judge. No, he, he's a good judge. But California is dragging this COVID issue yes, out. Yes, yes. They're blocking everything. Still I think down. they you were do stuff. Oh, I think God. they were hoping for after the elections and hoping that mm -hmm. if Biden gets in and other situations might push for more gun control in their favor. But even so, this is another news. Amy, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, she went through the ju Judiciary Senate Committee. And now the Senate is going to vote on her. She's solid, man. Mm -hmm. It'll be very nice. Yeah. I, like, she also does not push her opinions. She's very to the letter, letter of the law and how it's written. Um, and so, yeah, looking forward to that. And really, that's the extent of our news. We don't have a lot of news. I do have we one that's kind of I'm trying to actually locate it to just give you more of the actual breakdown but this gentleman bought a long rifle that he's buying from a, a second party so it's a private sale of a firearm right okay. so it's a long gun bolt action the okay. DOJ of California blocked it and called it assault weapon this is like an old school wooden gun with like it's literally bolt action and the and the FF or is it FFC? I think it is. Was trying to talk to them and be like, "What is your problem?" And no, DOJ's won't allow. They the don't care. They don't care. It's an assault weapon. So now long guns are being looked at assault weapons completely, regardless of the platform. What? That is mm -hmm. crazy. 
Texas when yeah. you think California can't get any worse. <laughs> oh, oh, let's not say that because gosh only knows. Wait, that. not going. On. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's uh, plenty of people that would like California to be even worse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to play a little video for you. You tell me your initial reaction to this one. This is Joe Biden talking about how law enforcement officers should de-escalate the situation. We can do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, you, but the, beyond that, you have to teach people how oh, to de-escalate and do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, you, but the, beyond that, you have to teach people how to de-escalate circumstances, de-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot them in the leg. There's ways you have <laughs> I can't. I can't even. <laughs> that was 70 Sam going at it again. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> Sorry. I just, no. There's so much wrong about that entire. <laughs> you shoot him in the leg. You should. You, you know, totally. Yeah, because, you know, the leg's only like, you know, a quarter of the size of the mass of your body. Like, let's, let's not forget about the gun in the guy's hand. Yeah, you know, you know it's yeah, right. how long is he very efficient at stopping the threat. No chokeholds either. Don't don't do the chokeholds. But he but you can do arm bars. So because you know these people aren't criminals and putting themselves in situations that they shouldn't be in anyways, but yes, let's protect them at all costs. Some the last little bit of bad news. I know California's backed up as well. It it's taking 3 to 6 months for Kern County, which is pro gun to get their concealed carry permit approved. And here we go, Detroit, nine month wait for their concealed carry licenses. Wow. Party foul. So if you're wanting your concealed carry, get on that now because you're, you might be able to get it next year. <laughs> My original one was like 12 months actually. Insane. Wait, you got one in California? In Orange County. Carry in Orange County. It just, really? First one four years ago took a very, very long time. Congratulations, because that is literally impossible. You got the unicorn. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I'm not in LA, so there's that, but no, right. it's still, it's easier, but not like every other place. <laughs> yeah, not like giving out like candy in other counties. No, yeah, it's, like, I, it's crazy. Well, that, that gives me a lot of hope for a lot of my friends and family that are starting to look into one. So I supposedly I it's that. gotten easier since I first did it. Oh, that's good. Time. It's or possible. Yeah. Yeah. But they still need to do it right now because the wait's going to be <laughs> forever. Now we have a bunch of pro gun incidences. We had a San Francisco business owner. There was an altercation in front of his business. All he did was come out and pull his gun out. He brandished. He didn't fire it. Bad guy took off. So that was great. St stopped beating up on and a tourist. What city was that in? San Francisco. Wow. He's a business owner. That's why you can have a gun. Business owner. An iconic business owner Kevin oh, he, Chan. Puts, he must put some major money into uh, certain areas the golden gate fortune cookie factory good for him i feel like i want to support him now heck yeah go there if you're in san francisco and eat at I'll his restaurant some fortune cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna save the last well um the last one for the armed citizen so that's it not a lot of news this week but that's okay Sometimes no news is good news, right? <laughs> Especially if they have been quiet down a lot yeah, in the gun world. Hot. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess the last news, we had the debate, the, the last presidential debate, <laughs> and zero conversation about our Second Amendment rights. Yep. Were you ladies as disappointed as I was? I was so bummed they didn't talk about that. I'm not even uh, surprised at this point, honestly. No. I mean, I think from where I stand on it as in watching it, I not that either party is like the idea, 
but I know what one is running. We both know what they've both done. They've both been in office. One's been in office for over 20 some years and one's been in office for four years. 47 years. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that's older than me. So <laughs> that's ridiculous. You do not belong in office like that. I mean, my gosh, you need to have terms. Um, it makes no sense why there's no term limits on that when there's on everything else. I'm like, but you've done nothing. Well, yeah. let's segue into Jessica. Jessica. Hello, our guest today. There are so many questions. We're just going to get to know you because like a lot of our guests, you are uh, what I say a renaissance woman, which means you're good at a lot of things. And I found you through social media and you post really fun outfits and are very pro gun and show that you don't have to be one certain mold to be a gun owner. So kind of tell us your gun story. Like how did you get into guns? We'll start there. Start at the very beginning. Let's see. Um, I guess growing up, we kind of shot guns a little bit. My stepdad was from Utah. We would go to Utah every summer. So it was like, here's a gun, shoot it. You know, there's that. And that was pretty much the extent of that. And then fast forward a few years, I met my ex-husband and he was in the military and our second date was at the indoor range. And then, you know, once you kind of date someone in the military and they like to shoot guns, you kind of start shooting guns a lot more. I got my first gun as a gift from him on my 22nd birthday. It was a 22 pistol, which it's so funny looking back at like how cool I thought I was shooting this little 22 with like no recoil. And I look You back were and cool. <laughs> Except for when I look at the videos of me shooting it, I'm like, oh my god, yes. that was atrocious. I am so embarrassed. This was a 22 with no recoil, and what the heck was I thinking? I took a picture with my finger on the trigger. <laughs> I've yeah. like, never done that, so that's good. I actually was going to put together a little video of like the evolution of my stance because I thought it was funny. And I'm like, you know, not many people on Instagram show the bad to the good. So I'm like, you know what? Let me do it. Plus, Instagram is shadow banning everything I do anyway. So might as well try to get some new things out there. Ah, uh, stories. Yeah, and then about 25, I got a Glock 19 and my ex-husband found out about IDPA and was like, you can do it. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, IDPA seemed like such a scary thing to me. Then I went and shot my first competition when I was around 25, and from there it kind of just blossomed. And how old are you now? 29. I'll be 30 and soon. Soon. Oh, January. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's exciting. So you've been doing it for almost five years of competition. Competition, yeah. And you've been shooting as a kiddo and uh that's so fun so what started your instagram page which was i knew it as jessica guns yes. is it jessica, I, and, I guns, started as jessica, jessica guns. guns and then i went to a different couple names but i started as jessica guns before i even was into the concealed carry i just wanted to like show the idpa videos and everything and then once i got more into the concealed carry and instagram started getting a little more particular about gun pages. I was fearful I was going to get deleted if I had the word guns in my name. So deleted that and then kind of just Instagram. My biggest thing of it was when I first started concealed carrying about four years ago, five years ago, I didn't think there was that many Instagram pages. Like I love now how many there are. When I first started, I think the two pages I found were Emily from Style Me Tactical and Noelle from Concealed Carry Woman. But both of them, I love them both. They're a lot more stylish than me. I don't wear the layers. I don't wear dresses. I don't live somewhere where it's cold. So I didn't really have anybody that was like wearing tank tops and shorts all the time. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see what I can figure out. Let's see if maybe sharing my outfits helps someone understand that like, I don't have to wear a paper bag and I can conceal my guns and I can still wear trendy trendy clothes because yeah clothes for hot warm weather because noelle's yeah. in utah yeah and, and I'm like, I'm in california where it today is the first weekend that it dipped below 70 wow so 
we've been at like 90 and 180 for it's with sweater weather. weather yeah we can't even yeah. wear you wear a cardigan in the morning and you're like molten hot and sweating by the time you get back in your car in the afternoon so it's just and then like, by five six o'clock you got to get the parka out because yeah it's and cold. layers are not as big of a thing in california for 90 percent of the year and i'm like everyone's like oh it's you know bigger gun season and i'm like oh, yeah okay <laughs> like, where you live <laughs> here it's so true that's so funny and even me like i don't I don't carry bigger guns because I wear bigger clothes or like heavier clothes because it's still uncomfortable for me. So I'm like, I don't want to wear a huge gun. And then I don't know. Anyhow, I think I'm a bigger guns for winter time's the best. Uh -huh. I've been wanting to try to carry my 19 more, but right now with everything, I can't find self defense rounds. So I'm like, well, I can't even try it even if I want to and it's mostly to prove someone wrong that I shoot with at IDPA who's a is a guy that's like I can't carry a 19 I'm too small for that and I'm like if I can carry it which I'm going to and I'm going to prove it <laughs> I'm gonna be like hey guess what I did it and you can too there is a way where there's a will there's a way like you just gotta be open to the possibility it's not like there's no one size fit all there's no one answer is good for everybody you just have to find your way. So how have you felt with the gun community coming at it from female and maybe not the typical image that people think of with firearms and concealed carry? Like how has the community welcomed you or what are the pros and cons that you've had to face? Well, <laughs> there is the whole being a woman on the internet who posts who, I guess, is semi-good looking. <laughs> um, that's super fun with sometimes the comments and the messages you get, and it's just like, okay. So I'm like, that sucks, but, you know, block, delete, ignore, whatever. But then you get the message from a woman who's like, oh my god, your outfits, I, like, love them, you gave me hope that I can try it, I'm still looking for my one holster, and it's, like, every time I get to this point where I'm, like, I'm so over this, I hate it all, I get a message that's, like, you are why I do this, you are the person I'm trying to reach with this, like, I love you, like, thank you so much, you just reiterated that the whole reason I do this is not lost cause, like, yes, I get some stupid comments from males who should not probably even be following my page, but the ones who are like, oh, I show my girlfriend this so that they can find outfits, or anytime I work with a new client and they're trying to conceal carry, I share your page, or so those people are what keep me going, and they definitely outweigh you the bad. You cling to them. I cling to them, because they're so much better than the bad. Like, the bad, it's gonna happen regardless, like, I could be posting about nothing and still get people who are going to be still silly, stupid. I tried to combine the two words into one. We're just going to call them silly. silly. Silly people. And, you know, as long as I get the people every once in a while that are like, okay, because of you. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> What's your day job? I work in finance as a customer service representative. Right. Super exciting. So <laughs> exciting. Guess what? You and Shauna have pretty much the same job. Yes. So maybe I wonder if the finance finance people in guns, your accountant, look at them differently from here on out. Hey, it is about money, right? <laughs> um, so I've noticed the people that I get a lot of the trolls are maybe because I'm a firearms instructor are questioning everything I do. Why'd you do that? You shouldn't do that. This is the wrong. Well, I'm really, really crazy about certain aspects that I'm like, okay, yeah, I see why you may agree with that. I disagree and agree to disagree. Like, yeah, that's kind of how, how I see that. So you have expanded into Jessica Craft and Conceal. Yeah. Explain about that expansion. So I was realizing how 
I was limiting myself because I really wanted to build like a brand of just everything that I was. And so I had shared on stories a few times, like a recipe I was making or something. And I actually got feedback, but like, can I have that recipe? Can I have this? And I'm like, okay, like maybe these people want more than my gun stuff. And I'm like, you know, I love the guns and the guns are great, but they're not my whole life. Like I am a craft nerd, geek, aficionado. I cook, I, you know, do other normal human things besides guns and guns are not my whole life. And my big thing about guns and why I do my Instagram page the way I do is I don't post stuff in real time because I don't want you to know what I'm wearing when I go outside. <laughs> like, kind of defeats the purpose if you actually see me in public and you know exactly where my gun is. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, what can I do to make this more well-rounded? Can I share my other life and not have people unfollow me just because of it? And so far, it's not been terrible. I, and I'm looking... I'm yeah, sorry, Crystal. I'm looking at your photos right now. Now, understanding the the community style area that you live in, you blend in. You you blend in. There's not going to be of a question if, if someone's recognizing you because you're just they're just going to bypass the outfit because it's just the moment of hey. So I just saw something like that similar, you know, but yeah. different colors and stuff. But no, I I mean. The, the, it's awesome style because style blends in with Orange County. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. But it there's a gun in there. There's a gun in there, which is very not Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I honestly feel this year it there's a turn. There's I feel it. I I'm, I'm an Orange County so. resident. Like I'm from Orange County. I graduated out of high school out of Orange County. Like, it's a little weird, but it's definitely changing more red. But it's just in insane to me a little bit how close-minded some of the people I went to school with and like I'm still very hesitant even though I have my you know page my brand if I meet someone new and they're like hey can I follow you on Instagram I don't tell them my page because I'm like I don't know how you're going to react to this. And honestly, I don't want to deal with arguing with you about my beliefs because I'm open to hear your beliefs and mm -hmm. not think you're wrong, but I know you're not going to feel the same about me. And so I'd rather avoid that. Let me see your page first before I tell you what mine is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You got to look for the keys on finding out if that person's going to be acceptable in your world to understand what you do. So they're not going to sit there and just go at you left and right because that's what I get within family. So it's, it's luckily my family is very supportive of the whole situation and every new person that I've met that I've been like my little hesitant Instagram push, every single person has ended up being like, you shoot, you know how to work guns. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Is that weird? Like, I, Oh, you're opening the door, okay, for so many women, and I have to say some kind of men are a little bit like, oh, maybe let me like kind of hear from the side, you know, they're listening to the side of the door, but honestly, by you sh doing this, okay, and talking to them, you are opening the door of allowing them to come in. It's kind of like, come on and join me for church, you know, <laughs> that's kind of the direction I treat Join me in the gun world. <laughs> yes, welcome to the gun world. Thanks I've much. definitely had more of the gun conversations in recent months with friends mm -hmm. that I never expected it to happen because of everything that's going on. And it's like, you know, people say it's record gun ownership, record this. And it's like, when some of my friends that I thought were completely anti gun actually approached me and were like, so what would I want for home defense? And what would I want for this? And what's the best round? And I'm like, First, I, like, just stared at them for, like, 30 seconds, not moving, where they're like, hi, are you there? And I'm like, I am. I just need some time to process just what you're saying. happy tears. I'm just so happy. Yes. <laughs> the little person inside my head right now is like, oh, my God, did that just happen? Like, <laughs> did you hear that right? Like, let me extra time to process and make sure I heard those words come yeah. out of your mouth correctly. They're, they're now, I feel that people are starting to come out of their bubble of, of being concerned of what others think of. I think yeah. the bubble was thinking that they were completely safe 
and that nothing i we're in america nothing bad's gonna happen <laughs> and then realizing how quickly Same things change. can change and escalate and you feel so vulnerable yeah. they were like holy crap my beautiful suburb is ripped apart and people are threatening harm and I have nothing. I have my fists that I don't know how to use. <laughs> I have a chair from afar or, you know, I have a, I have a golf club or a bat or something. They're realizing, yeah, no, I don't have this. And I have maybe vulnerable people with me too. I have children or my, I love my dogs and I don't want them to be the, the first line of defense or whatever it is, people they're trying to protect. And so, yeah, it's, it's been glorious, glorious oh, little experience. Lovely. Well, and it's like the same conversation you have when people are like, well, why do you do this? And why do you conceal carry? And I'm like, well, I put on my seatbelt every time I get in my car. Do I think I'm going to get in a car accident every time I'm in my car? No, but if I get in a car accident, my seatbelt is probably going to save my life. If I get into a situation where someone is attacking me, I need to be able to defend myself. Like, sure, I'm a tall woman, but I'm like, sure, I go to the gym and I'm pretty strong, but like, if some six foot something dude grabs onto me, like, I'm not going to be able to get away. Like, I need every advantage that I can get because that's the world we live in and it's never I never ever ever want to even ever take my gun out of the holster unless I'm at the range like oh, but yeah. I want to know that I have it in case some you know crackhead homeless guy decides he wants to attack me like whatever it is like I'm not planning for that scenario but I know that I have it I need it well and the, and the crazy thing for you and a lot of other folks in, in your position, where you live as in Orange County, to drive to say, let's say to Cerritos, you're going through certain cities that you don't want to stop in, you know, just right off the five, you know, that one hotel that's the casino, you don't want to stop in there. You, but what if say you got to get something to eat? What if you got to get gas or you, unfortunately you your car breaks down? You end up in an auto accident. The things that it can put you in a position that makes you vulnerable, vulnerable I know I'm not saying this right, vulnerable. but, it, you know, vulnerable, I, open to someone to come and hurt you, you know, like, that's, that's what I, you know, that's why I, I'm all about it, you know. Now, when I went to get my initial CCW, I was told to bring 200 rounds, and that was it, and we shot. It was fill up your, your mag, put it in, go through your shooting, drop your mag, put the second one in, and shoot, shoot, shoot. You know, repeat, repeat, repeat. 200 rounds, that's it. On the new one for Kern County, I was really impressed with it. I'm very happy about the matter of what it was requiring. I think it's a good thing because it's forcing the person of a gun owner to not take advantage of the CCW, but also to make sure that they do know how to properly use it and be prepared for whatever the circumstances are of using their firearm, which I hope that no one ever has to, because that's just not the plan, that we want that to happen. I love the testing aspect of the shooting for the CCW. Like, I know I'm probably gonna get some people who are like, why would you even agree to this? But I like the idea of the national reciprocity thing because I want a uniform procedure because it kind of scares the crap out of me that in some states all you do is fill out an application and all of a sudden you can carry your gun all the time. And I'm like, wait, all you did was fill out an application, you didn't see the person shoot, you didn't see them handle their weapon, and I have to expect that they're not going to shoot me because they're carrying? Yes. Like, Meanwhile, I'm over here in Kansas, and you don't even have to fill out an application. Oh. See? Anyone I, over 21 can put a gun in their pocket. But would you say, Crystal, that most people in Kentucky – or wait, Kansas. Is that Kansas, thank you. I always make sure on that. Um, <laughs> They actually generally go out and shoot. They generally know how to use their firearm. Are you finding hmm, it I don't less know. or more so? Uh, I don't know. I would say yes, they're more familiar with firearms, but okay. no, <laughs> not more than I mean, Utah. I, I'm just because I, I can say that mostly probably every other state out there, um, other than New York or California or Hawaii might be the three that I'm thinking of. 
that are anti-gun. Yeah. Like Jessica was saying, I, I'm on board of having something that shows the person needs it. I don't want to be driving down the road and something's breaking out over here and my children or myself or my dog gets shot. It's not right. I'm on board with ch- training, obviously, mama yeah. bear defense. <laughs> Correct. I started that for a reason. Uh, however, I struggle with the, the expense of training because I feel like when a state mandates a certain curriculum or um, an eight-hour class, then the instructor needs to get paid. Right. And so an eight hour class, you're looking at the cheapest 20 bucks an hour or something like that. And that's a more expensive class, which means class people, so people who have the means to pay for that class can take it. The people who are middle to low income cannot. So I feel like it squashes the rights or the ability of someone who is less than middle in- income to get that experience. And so I teeter because I'm like, I want everyone to get that training, but I also, I, okay, I'm going to talk about the well-armed women. I love them. I don't like that their instructors don't get paid, right? So I want the instructors to get paid for their time, But I also want students to have access, and there I sit with. I like. I want everyone to get training, but at minimum, I want there to be some kind of shooting requirement for being able to carry. Like training, sure, but if minimum, like you got to take this target, and you have to like we're gonna supervise you, and you're gonna, you know, not shoot. But you have to pay for the instructor to be there for that, which makes that class more expensive. That's true. Like Utah, the concealed carry class is like 45 bucks. When I did my, my add a gun. So I was adding a gun that you still have to prove you're proficient with. They just gave me the paper and said, put it at this line, bring it back when you're done, we'll score it. So as far as they know, like I could have put a whole magazine off to the right in someone else's paper and then just shot more because like no one's there doing it. So there's also that we're like, <laughs> but how much did you pay for your initial? Uh, oh God. I want to say all said and done for my initial CCW that I think I spent over a thousand dollars. Exactly. And it's worth and it because it's your safety. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I'm not super wealthy. Like, I make my ends meet, but, like, I saved up in order to do that process because it was not cheap. Luckily, I went to a class where it was an amazing class where it wasn't just, like, lecture, lecture, lecture. He's a, um, a jag. And so he talked about, like, real-world repercussions and real-world um, like cases for everything that he had to talk about. So I was like, oh, okay, like, I feel like I learned something from this, but it still was a lot more money than I was wanting to spend because, but you only have to do that once. And why did you want your concealed carry? I just felt like it was a good choice to make. So my ex-husband had had one for like two years and I was like, oh, I don't need one. He has it. I'm always with him. And then I'm like, wait, when I go to work, when I go to the gas station, when I run my errands, like, I'm not with him. And once he got it, I started like thinking more and like, you know, becoming more situationally aware. And I'm like, like, what if that guy who has road rage decides he has a gun and wants to like shoot at me? Like, I don't know. There's so many things that could go wrong. So I'm like, you know what? If I have the means to get it and I'm allowed to get it, I'm going to get it. Fabulous. So you do some gun crafts crafty gun stuff let's do you have it near you can you show I actually us? just <laughs> made these little ones from nerds it's oh. <laughs> i haven't put a keychain in it yet because i've been busy but i was like oh can i test out putting candy and resin and see how it works and i kind of enjoyed it so much <laughs> so my house key when i leave the house is my little gun keychain 
Yeah, little sparkles. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you know, girls like sparkles, girls like guns. Let's see what we can have. And you also, I'm actually going to share for those who are watching on on the YouTube, can share your little Etsy here. So your Etsy is Jessica Makes Things. And you have, have you always been into sewing? Yeah, that was like the first craft I ever learned how to do when I was back in, oh gosh, elementary school, I think. My mom had a sewing machine. She taught me. And then, you know, it was the cool thing when I was in middle school to not have a backpack. It was all about the bags. And so I learned how to sew and make my own custom bags because I was like, well, I want to be cool like all the cool kids, even though I was a giant nerd. So, <laughs> I love these little bows. They're so cute. If my daughter would freaking keep them in her hair. <laughs> I just made so many of them because my best friend just had a baby girl. So a lot of bows because when you're the crafty auntie, you have to <laughs> be the bow person. And you have to start them with bows young. All yeah. of you, <laughs> Shauna, <laughs> if you want her to wear bows, Shauna has a baby girl. You need to put those bows or those headbands in I'm now. I'm with the headbands. Yes. And she loves them. She just like gets all smiley and everything. Yes. Just, oh my goodness. You have gracious. to start young. I did not. And by the time my daughter was that, I'm like, oh, you have hair. Let's do this. She's like, Psh, nope. <laughs> That's what she was doing. And she also came out with a whole head of hair. So I got little things to grab onto it. But I'm like, okay, let's give you the headbands here. You clip the bow to the headbands. You're good. Here's the pack you should buy on Amazon for the bows I'm making you. We're good. My daughter will let me do Elsa Anna hair. Oh. Elsa hair, which is a braid. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're letting me play with your hair? Not like, <sighs> okay, if anyone follows me on Instagram, we all know that Crystal <laughs> does nothing with her hair. It is down at all times or up in a bun. But that is the extent of my cute hairness. But I want my daughter to be cute. Dang it. <laughs> uh, so okay you started concealed carrying because of that uh because you saw your ex doing it and you wanted your own personal protection and then you started the instagram because you wanted to show someone who's not wearing as many clothes That's mm. right. <laughs> <laughs> and how to conceal carry in without that situation looking like a man. <laughs> Without looking, yeah, without having, like, a huge bulge. Hmm? Yeah, because that was, like, literally the assumption I had. I was like, well, how am I going to do this? And then... It look like I have a, a dick in my pants. Yeah. Or oh, and when you get those comments all the time, it's like, well, don't shoot your dick off. I'm like, well, like, I don't have one, but... Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, my, my comment for that just became very inappropriate, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I like laughed really, well, not laughed. I guess I thought, I, guess, I don't know if it was an argument, but my ex obviously had carried for several years before I did. And it became this like point of contention of like, well, you only need one holster. And I'm like, no, like, no, I, I'm just going to say no to you and explain why later because you know what? Like, you need one holster because you wear the same boxy t-shirt and cargo pants or jeans every single day and that holster works with every single outfit you do have you ever tried wearing a women's shirt they're not boxy everything's tailored everything's fitted like no i cannot physically use one holster because it's like never gonna work with everything that i have like yeah I just <laughs> how do i carry when i wear a dress yeah. How do I carry when I wear a skirt with a tucked in shirt or how do I carry in leggings or workout pants? There's so many different women. We wear a variety. Yeah. I'm like, we are not as basic as you. Thank you very <laughs> yeah, much. You basic. To good. So to look good, we got to have different holsters. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, and you, you got to wear that cute top going out, you know, I mean, the silk top, the the thin cotton to keep everything nice and cool. I mean, we don't get a choice of the material that the cute outfit comes into. It's just what it is. Gotta or make like it work. When crop tops all of a sudden came in and it was like, well, everyone's wearing a crop top, so I gotta figure out how to make this work. <laughs> well, Flashbang. At least you don't have as much yeah. shirt to pull up to pull it out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the flashbang flash is very short. Bing. 
<laughs> what are some of your favorite concealed carry options or holster stuff? My go-to if I'm like on the go and I need something real quick, I always go with my crossbreed appendix inside the waistband one. I love it. It has one clip on one side, so it makes like going to the bathroom really easy and all that. And I feel like I can pretty much conceal everything with that as long as I'm not like... And what gun do you conceal mainly? My Glock 43. So okay. I still have a little smaller gun, which was a pain to get in California, but I got one. Um, and so that's my go-to go-to. I have a second similar setup that has the like sidecar setup with the mag holster attached to it. And then I have a hip carry option, but I haven't been doing the hip carry as much because I've been noticing like with the whole gun handle and sitting all day, it kind of like hurts my hips to sit all day with the gun on my hip. So I'm like, you know what? My body doesn't like this. So unless I'm going to be somewhere where I'm primarily standing, that's not my everyday option anymore because I don't really want my hips to hurt or my pelvis <laughs> or my back or whatever it is from sitting like. Ugh, you're just so picky. I know. How dare I? <laughs> the long California drives before traffic. Oh, oh gosh. There and I was hip carrying. It'd be like towards the end of my thing, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like leaving. I'm like, I don't know how I'm driving at this point. It's probably not very safe, but at least I'm comfortable. It's well, like remember, the unbuckle the pants at the end of the day. My I believe they say that. California is honestly the only state that tells you how long it takes to go somewhere within time, and in every other state, it's within mileage. So. Oh. And it's always yeah. time based on, well, what time do you want me there? Oh, you want me there at 6 p.m.? Okay, I'll be leaving at 4. What? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to leave at 4. They're like, why? Yes. And I'm like, well, because that's how long it takes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lots of podcasts. Hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> plenty of time for people to listen. So speaking of states, Jessica, tell us about Florida. Florida is a thing that may or may not, but mostly may, <laughs> happen. <laughs> that wink was terrible, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful at it, but Florida is looking like it's very likely to be an option in the next minimum six months. Probably more like two. What? But. Okay, do you have more deets on this? Like, what? What the what? So I have two older brothers. One lives in Minnesota, one lives in Florida. I started looking at different options because I'm like, California is just stupid expensive. Just, it's just, it's in, it's just not feasible unless I want to live in like central California <laughs> or like somewhere where there's nothing close by or anything. Like it's just, I don't want to spend 700 grand on a house that I have to completely gut and redo. Like that's just not something I'm looking into. And then let's say that COVID was eye-opening to how, let's keep this PG, how rude <laughs> people are in California. And like, I had already been seeing the shift of like very aggressive personalities and very like outspoken people in not a good way. And I was like, man, it's gotta be better like than this somewhere. Like, and I'm born and raised in Southern California. So I've been a strong hold out here. And like two years ago, I brought the, this point to my mom. I was like, I'm going to leave. My mom promptly like cried. And I'm like, my mom is my best friend. So it was my mom and then my other best friend. I was like, you two are the reason I'm still here. And then somehow through COVID, I got talking to my mom and she's now on the Florida train. Woo! I guess because I convinced her that she's going to be by her grandbabies. And that my stepdad, you know, should really start slowing down. And the Florida life is great for retirement. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. But it became a thing. So you know, Minnesota was never an option because I don't do the white stuff on the ground that you guys get. Yeah. <laughs> I also don't do that. Oh, I'm an Oregon go on do. Oregon coast girl. Yeah. No, my, my brother said last Christmas was like negative 40 in Minnesota. No. And I was like, <laughs> what? That's like, right. They had the sub-zero freeze that came through there. It was, was intense. I'm no. like, no, no. Like, Okay, but it snowed more in Tehachapi last year <laughs> than it had when I lived in Tehachapi, California, than it had the pre previous five years in Utah. It's 
it kind of sucked. It had to it be did. had more snow. I mean, that was the most snow my Utah baby, my four-year-old, had ever seen in his life. And I was like, we're in California? What? Sometimes the? California gets that. I think back at, what was it, like 2009 when, like, we had that record snow storms yes. up in, like, Bridgeport and everything. Yes. I specifically remember those because my ex-husband was doing a workup a winter workup and he was in the crazy snow and I just remember laughing at him because I'm like that sucks so bad but you have no choice like you're up to your neck in snow and it's pouring cats and dogs here and every road is flooded because yeah. California can't handle the rain but yeah but you're from the Orange County so it doesn't really snow over there so Minnesota no, yeah I, I don't would... do white stuff on the ground <laughs> yeah I was like you know Florida Minnesota the northern area of Florida is very similar California-wise weather. Like, yes. for it's obviously more humid in the summer. I get it. People, thank you. You don't need to remind me. Yes, it's there's so hurt. humid. Oh, my gosh. Did you know? Did oh you God. know? You know the two things I get every time I tell someone about Florida? But there's hurricanes. Okay. Well, California yeah. has earthquakes. And you know what the great part about a hurricane is? You get a warning. Yes. You know yes. what? This is an earthquake here. All of a sudden, I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, "Oh snaps! That's an or, earthquake!" Or you have stuff falling off your your shelves, or your yeah. TV's falling down on your bed. Like, yeah, no, I I'd rather deal with hurricanes or tornadoes any day. No, I'm happy for you. Please have warnings. I'm good with that. And yes, I understand it's humid, but you know what? Ninety percent of the time in summer, my hair is up anyway. So what do I care? And if I work inside where it's air conditioned, it's you fine. know what? Humidity. <laughs> This is my first time living in, other than Brazil, okay, Brazil's super humid, but Kansas is very humid, and I can appreciate it because everything is so green here, like all the time. In Utah, the end of the summer, everything is brown, like crispy, fried, and there's hardly any green, whereas here, the end of the summer, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's green everywhere still because of the humidity, so... I feel like the last couple of California summers have actually been rather humid anyways. Like, people are like, well, it's so humid there. And I was like, honestly, I can't remember a summer within the last four years that wasn't just grossly humid, like, for at least half of the summer. So I'm like, honestly, what's different? Except for the fact that I can be in a red state where I can... Yeah, a lot more freedom. A lot of guns. I'm so you can actually excited. purchase real guns I and know, purchase a home. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen well, round magazine. <laughs> oh my gosh! The best thing is, is that when I I visited Florida one time, uh, spring break through high school, and the best thing with the humidity thing, if you wear like your the you know how men have undershirts? Well, they have the women with the body suits and stuff like that under you know things we can wear. I noticed that works better in the case of wearing it with your clothes also because you're not having your clothes like cling to you. So yeah. when I went to Texas and lived in Texas, I lived in the DFW Dallas area and it got, it got pretty nasty through there sometimes. And I did the same thing. I wore like an actual thin kind of nylon undershirt, material, like the undershirt for women. Amazing. No joke. And thinking about it as a carrier, I could see that because you don't want to have oh, your item. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you don't want that rubbingness. You don't want that, you know, rash to start or however the case is, you know, because of the humidity and your body's yeah. reaction to the product. So I, I'm going to recommend that. I, let me know what you think when you try. Yeah, definitely. I'm like, I'm, I'm a big proponent for you know, tank tops, anything under, like, I'm like, body suits that, you know, you don't have to worry about untucking and tucking in. It's just, like, having that separation just for when you go to sit that the gun actually kind of moves with you instead of being, like, <laughs> like, clicky, clicky, <laughs> sticky, sticky, and that's, like, one of the 100% reasons why I'm just not a big fan, personally, of an all-Kydex holster, because I've never got it to not just cling Damn. to my and not move. So I'm like, I'm more of a fan of like a hybrid style because it actually kind of moves with me a little bit more. And then the couple of days I wear like my Ulti Clip ones are all Kydex. And I'm like, every time I wear those, I'm like, this is why I don't wear these all the time. This is not my favorite, but my personal preference is that, but everyone has what's comfortable. 
Well, I am so excited for you and I'm excited to follow your journey. For those who want to follow your journey, how and where should they find you? Probably start on Instagram, which is Jessica period craft and conceal. Um, Jessica, J E S I K A. Oh, sorry. My name is felt weird. It's definitely strange. I feel <laughs> you. Yeah, you do. I get it. <laughs> um, I think all of us across the board. <laughs> yeah, we all have weird names. Go on, go on YouTube and you will see all of our names spelled weird yes. normally. Oh, yeah. Anywho, Jessica craft and concealed. And then from there, my YouTube is linked. My blog is linked. Um, I think those are my main things right now. I do share things to YouTube every once in a while. They're not very great quality. They're more vloggy because I am not techie, but they work. <laughs> They're still entertaining. She's, if I'm sure you guys have a little taste of her, follow her. She's really fun. She's really active and very responsive. So very fun to follow. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your personality with us and other women and just a little bit about you and your, and I feel like we, I feel like we never get the full uh, interview because it's just scratching the surface of who someone is. Like how much can you get done in like 40 minutes? We're going to end with the armed citizen story. This happened in, speaking of Florida, in oh. Miami, Florida, a woman protected herself from robbers. There's actually a video of this. It's, so what's kind of funny about this story is that this woman is a social media influencer in the regard that she shares uh, I would say soft porn and, and she invites people to follow her fans only or only fans page for those of you, hopefully I'm not introducing you to something, <laughs> but it's basically you could pay to subscribe to someone and then they reveal generally more risky material <laughs> that you can follow them and pay to see riskier or racier material. Anywho, so this woman is in this industry. So, I mean, I would say like a Playboy bunny, that's her equation. And they were having a party at her house and it was her husband and her seven-year-old son and they were having people over. And as the gate was open, two robbers ran in with guns and they're pointing and she found a, her husband's gun or so it wasn't, I don't believe it was hers. She found a gun, yelled at him, said, Hey, my child's in here. Don't shoot. They ended up shooting and she shot back. Her husband ran in, grabbed the gun from her and then proceeded to shoot. So I'm going to share the video for those watching on YouTube of the encounter here. You can see what happened here. Let me back up. As Trent explains what happened next. It's a heart pounding home invasion. A young mom see opens the, the bedroom the door couch. and is met by a barrage of gunfire. The drama started when a guest of the homeowners pulled into the driveway of a swanky home in Hialeah, swanky. Florida. Two masked gunmen appear out of nowhere and force the driver inside. The homeowner is there with a bunch of pals he's invited over to watch the NBA finals oh, when the kid. armed robbers burst in. They ordered everyone to the floor. Mom, Ansley Pacheco, was in her bedroom when she heard the chaos in the family room. I said, don't shoot me, my son is in here. Don't shoot me! One gunman opened fire. He started shooting at me. They shot at me about seven times, six, seven times. That's when she grabbed her handgun oh, yes, it's hers. and fired back. That's when her husband and his buddy took the weapon the from gun. her and went after the thugs. Okay, yeah. Not intense. Oh my God. But terrible. they left. The only thing is at the end, the husband chased them out and was shooting at them as they were running away you're not supposed to do that for all listening however at least they got them out of the house i can't how scary with your little kids at the house 
Ugh. It's important to have protection. No one was harmed. So that's but the did success. You, the funny thing on that video, the adults were put down on the ground. The child was left on the couch. Yes. The weirdest thing. The and they didn't even thing. notice that the, I mean, I guess they didn't really want to mess with the child, but still they're shooting over the kid. Hello. Ugh. I also just don't understand their mindset of like, you come into a house where you know, like, yes, you're armed, but you are outnumbered and you still continue to do this. Like there was a lot more people in there than those two gunmen. Like if they wanted to do something crazy, like. Yeah. They were thinking score. Look at all these people we can rob. I don't know. Thank you. So yeah, crazy happens everywhere and you're going to be having your gun. So it doesn't matter in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Well, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, rate, do all, do all the good bits for us so that we can get more recognition and share this. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.